I was born in Burma. The Burm Burmese soldier they are to attack uh, our Korean village. Yes, and then they are come when they are come to the village. They are attacked. Everything is a broke broken a village and burn the horse and um, uh, and burn all the food and kill all the people and kill the animals like that so we cannot stay in the Burma and then we move to refugee camp there we got a good opportunity to come in Australia when I walk on the street and take the bus when on all the bus sometimes the young boy they are taught to me sometimes they are say they are said fuck is a boy fuck is yeah they are saying me like that they sometimes give me set or uh, uh, I feel not happy like because I'm in Aus Asian I'm not in Australia I moved to Australia to be free but when they are they are told me like that or some something is not a good and I feel sick because I do not have country. I think discrimination is like when someone disagrees with who someone else is, like whether it be race or sexuality. A lot of discrimination is based on um, fear and misunderstanding and lack of mind. That's really about trying to put them down and it's about taking their autonomy away from them. Discrimination means that I'm not viewed as a person sometimes. Um, I don't think people often understand the implications of uh, discriminating against other people. I think to them it's just often an action uh, and perhaps a subconscious one. I follow a car in from Torquay every week with one of those Australia stickers on it that says we're for and every week I pull up at the lights, I want to pull it off the back of their car. But it's okay for them to drive around with that sticker. That's, that's never okay. Well, for people that are being discriminated against, there's all sorts of barriers for them to become self-determined and self-actualised and the opportunities that exist uh, for, for other people in this community aren't there. So the cost uh, can be felt economically in terms of, I mean, most Aboriginal people earn about 59% of what non-Aboriginal people do. So just in that area alone, in terms of capacity building through education and employment, there's barriers all the way through to that, that prevent people from actually um, progressing in their careers, in employment and those sorts of things. Health, all the social determinants. I have actually been beaten up within Geelong at McDonald's at night, probably wasn't the best place to be, but um, yeah, just being called general words like emo and stuff, so yeah, that's probably one of the biggest conflicts within Geelong is the whole emo kind of thing, that hit us pretty bad I guess. Well, I think it can, you know, it could range dramatically. For some people, it can be uh, short term, and it might be that they just feel angry and they might lash out about that, or it might be that it has quite sustained, ongoing um, mental health effects on them. It could have physical effects on them. Uh, we know, for a fact, in Australia, that uh, uh, you know, people's uh, mental health and well-being is fundamental to their physical health and the cost of that on uh, both the hospital system and on individuals is absolutely huge and there would be people who would be feeling as a result of discrimination that they're not part of the broader community and therefore they become withdrawn and I'm sure their mental health suffers as a result. Because I'm a lesbian, the stereotype that comes with that is uh, say straight girls for example like not wanting to be my friend not not even wanting to give me a hug or a handshake because they think just because I'm a girl attracted to other girls I'm gonna go hit on all of them no matter how uncomfortable it makes them and like, I think that's just like ridiculous. I was in science class 
and one of the people in class started calling me a fag over and over again until eventually the whole class just joined in and the teacher was just sitting back at her desk. She knew that it was going on and she saw I was crying and she just sat back there and did nothing and just watched the whole thing go on. I ran off and I was actually on the verge of suicide during that time. When we run our parent ed, we often challenge parents to look at the language of their children and the language that they're using at home. One thing we know is with young people that they model what they see on a daily basis, they model what they see on television, they model what they see on computer games. So we, we need to sit with our, our kids and, and, and teach them some critical literacy around that stuff. Often it's about exposing kids to situations. Kids will make good choices if they're exposed with support it's not difficult, it's a lot harder to challenge someone who's 40, 50, 60 year old who's been living that life. I think the big thing is ignorance. Uh, they assume, there's a lot of assumptions that if someone's from another country, they assume that they are what little they know about that and ignorance, basically ignorance and assumptions. I think more often than not, the racist isn't the big redneck that we kind of like to think they are, but they don't know any different. So they are decent, good, kind people that discriminate and are racist through complete lack of knowledge. We run lots of education and training programs. We run lots of engagement programs. A million other community organisations do as well. And I think that's really important because what you're doing is putting new ideas into the mix. You're uh, bringing different groups together. You're actually um, uh, really demystifying difference and saying there's a benefit in difference uh, and there's a value add in difference because it, it, it adds to us as a community. Discrimination works at diff different levels. It might be discrimination, for instance, at a high level of high positions, executive positions, where a nation somehow or other become insulated. It's not a policy of the, the nation, yet it becomes entrenched because of practices of certain people. You can find yourself victim of, uh, of that sort of thing, that discrimination, where you're trying to open a door to a job and you'll find job opportunities are not equal. So this is a kind of discrimination. So discrimination can exist at various levels. In a job interview, I think for, for many people, um, often that, that, that notion of difference is just too much for them to handle and, and they're, thinking that, they're thinking that they're might be reasons why this person wouldn't be a suitable applicant for a job or, or as a tenant. They really don't have any reality to base it on that. It's just the difference that, that often scares people off, I think. The more we get those sort of media portrayals of uh, discrimination being a legitimate thing, or that, uh, and a classic example uh, is the current debate about asylum seekers, and that's been going on for uh, you know a number of years now, but it's, it's certainly got a lot of carriage in the last number of weeks and then we get local media commenting on national media stories and people interpreting what other people you know they think they were saying and that has to have an impact on what the broader society thinks. The political environment in the lead up to events like Cronulla riots and the um, you know people media around stuff like boat the, the boat people narrative and stuff has really stirred up more discriminative behaviour. In terms of asylum seekers and, and their human rights, we've recently been um, criticised by the United Nations Human Rights Commission about Australia's treatment of asylum seekers and refugees. So um, I don't know whether it's in policy or it's more about the enactment of that policy, but I would certainly change that. Discrimination to me means not giving others a fair go just because of a, a age uh, sex, uh, the 
sexual preferences, skin colour, you name it. Just not on. You know, if you're, you're eight and you're walking to school and people are spitting at your mum, you know, it's... This is like 1974, so mum and dad uh, are black and white marriage. 1967 they got married when black and white marriages weren't allowed. And um, I think when, when you see that sort of behaviour, you know, I, when they spat at her, she would just say, turn the other cheek. And for me, it was, okay, she's not worried. If she's not worried, then I can handle this. So I guess I never shared with mum and dad after that any sort of racism. They knew it was happening, but um, I sort of started to protect them from a young age. So, uh, but it was very, it was scary. I always say that equal opportunity is a, it's a process and a journey. Uh, it's something you have to revitalise, refresh, remind people about, don't let people slip into being frightened about difference. We only ever get the tip of the iceberg in terms of people who go on to actually lodge a complaint of discrimination because discrimination is about disempowering people. I think there is actually benefit in, um, in, in actually having public campaigns, so having public messaging which might be on TV, on radio, on billboards, uh, which has different messages about discrimination. When you do a road toll uh, campaign and you say to people uh, this accident or this death could be someone in your family, people internalise it and then say, yeah, I, I need to be more careful on the roads. Unless we engage everyone in the discussion about um, intolerance and racism and make it personal and say to people, if this happened to you and your family, how would you feel if uh, someone you loved um, was discriminated against? What impact would that have on you? I think that might get people starting to think a little bit more about the role they play. The best way is simply to lead by example and don't engage in discriminatory behaviour yourself. There are so many more things that we have in common and, and I think when we talk about discrimination so often we're talking about difference and the fact is our differences really are so minimal compared to our similarities. Well, I'm just, I'm just using the word them and they myself out of sheer habit, you know, if we stop using that you know, vocabulary then that'll help, I think. People that are different to you are not an optional extra. We're here. Look, deal with us. Grow. Learn something. Uh, I've got some uh, classmates. Uh, they decide we're going to uh, uh, overseas, America, Britain, Germany, Belgium, Italy. Uh, but some, we, we, some friends decided to go to Australia. And we research about Australia. Australia is so nice, friendly, educated good environment, big country, social system. That's why I decided to come to Australia.